Hey everybody, it's Elijah Muse here again with Gifted Hand School of Music and today we're going to be covering five must-know jazz chords for you. We're going to be running through these essential chords, showing you how to play them and what context to play them in, alright? So let's get started here. Alright, so the first chord that we're going to go over today is going to be the major seventh chord. And we discussed this in another video, I'll link the video in the description. Uh, we discussed this in another video, but I want to go into a little bit more detail today. All right, so to build a major seventh chord, that to build that, all you do is you take a C major triad, right? And all you have to do is count up the C major scale one, two, three, four, five, six to the seven. Count up to the seven, and you add that seventh note. That gives you a C major seven chord, okay? But we can go deeper into the C major sevens um, than just adding this. We have what are called extensions or color tones, okay? And so if we count up past seven or past eight, we have more numbers to work with, right? So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then after eight, we have nine, right? So you can add the nine and that gives you a C major nine. Or you can go here. You can go 9, 10, 11, and sharp 11. That's a C major, sharp 11. Well, we can do this. Which gives us a C major 13. This is the 13, or the 6, also known as the 6. And this is our 9. The D is a 9, or known as the 2. Okay? So we can add these notes to a major, a C major 7, or any major chord for that matter, to give us more color, more texture, and more emotions behind the chord, right? So the, the color tones or the extensions that you can add to a C major 7 chord are going to be your 9, your sharp 11, or your 13, okay? So these three notes are added options that you can add to a C major 7 chord to give you a more jazzy feel. And these are some extensions that you will hear in your common jazz songs and jazz standards. So the next chord is going to be the minor 7th chord. And we're going to look at C minor 7, all right? So this is a minor chord. To make a C minor 7 chord, you take your C minor triad and you count up the minor scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. This is a natural minor scale that we're counting up. You count up the minor scale and you add the seventh, okay? That's all. Or if you're at a major seven and you want to get a minor seven, the difference is you have to flat, flat the third, and flat the seventh, okay? Those are the differences from a C major seven and a C minor seven, okay? And just like we had extensions with the major seven chord, we can add extensions to our minor seventh chords as well to give us a C minor nine or to give us a C minor 11. There's another voice for C minor 11. That is a Kenny Barron voicing. We discussed that also in another video, okay? And so like I said, the extensions for a minor chord that you can add are going to be the nine, the 9, the 11, this is a regular 11, or the 6, also known as the 13. All right? Those are the extensions that you can add to a minor 7th chord that you will hear in many of your common jazz, gospel, R&B, neo-soul songs. All right, the next chord that we're going to cover is going to be the half diminished chord, also known as a minor 7 flat 5, okay? And so we're looking at C minor 7 flat 5, also known as C half diminished. So with this chord, to get it, we can play a C minor chord, a C minor 7 chord, right? And all you have to do is take the 5th and flat to give you this chord, okay? That's how you can find a C minor seven flat five. Or you can take a diminished chord, a fully diminished, diminished seven, right? T 
take the top note, your seven, and raise it. And that will also give you the C minor seven flat five, AKA also known as C half diminished, okay? So the uses for the minor seven flat five chord, if you haven't heard of it or haven't played the chord before, is usually gonna be in a minor two five one context or a seven three six. Okay, so let's take C major. Let's say we're trying to get from C to A minor. So that's the one chord to the six chord. Uh, what you can do is play a progression called the seven three six, which is your seven of C major is B. That's always going to be a uh, minor seven flat five chord, right? To the three, which is dominant six. So the half diminished can be used in that chord progression, seven, three, six, okay? Or if we're looking at a minor key and say a song calls for a two, five, one. So let's say we're in C minor, right? C minor scale. And the song calls for a two, five, one. The two of your minor key, the two chord of your minor key is always, or is going to be a half diminished or your minor seven flat five, D minor seven flat five. So we're in C minor, right? So our two is D, which is D minor seven flat five. There's our half diminished or our minor seven flat five to our five chord to our one chord, okay? So those are some contexts that the half diminished or the minor seven flat five chord is used. All right, the next chord that we're going to look at is going to be a dominant chord, which is this chord right here. All right, that's a dominant chord. This is a G7 chord, G7 or G dominant, okay? And a dominant chord is actually very simple. It's easy to find if you know how to make a major seven chord which we already went over so this is G major seven all you have to do to create a dominant chord is lower the major seven by a half step and that gives you a dominant seven so a dominant chord or a seven chord has a major triad in it right one three five major third but it has a minor seven or a flatted seven which differs from the major seven chord, okay? So that's our dominant seven chord. And this chord is essential to many different genres, jazz, gospel, um, being that it acts as a transition chord. So majority of the time, when you see a dominant chord, it's acting as a passing chord or a chord that takes us to a chord that's a fifth away from it, right? So if you see a G7, we're gonna assume that it goes to the C major seven because that's a fifth away, right? So if we're going to the G, five, four, three, two, the C is a fifth away, right? And so this will be useful once we start looking into passing chords uh, because when we play songs and we're trying to fill in space or when we're trying to, to make the song sound more complex or add more color to it, we can add dominant chords to fill up maybe some empty space that there would be in a song. And so with dominant chords, there are also extensions, just like the major and the minor chords. We can add a nine to a dominant chord. The nine, which G dominant, the nine would be A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a nine. Or you can also add a 13. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, okay? So those are just some common extensions, common color tones that are added to a dominant chord voicing, the nine and the 13, okay? And now we're on to our final chord, which is going to be an altered chord. Um, an altered chord is actually built off of a dominant chord, meaning that you have your root note and it shares the third, the major third, and the flatted seventh of the seven chord. 
or of a diamond core, right? So these three essential things are carried into an altered chord. The only difference is that the color tones that we use in an altered chord aren't going to be in your basic G scale. So it's outside of these notes. And so when we alter a note, what we can do is alter the, let's say the nine that we've already discussed. It can be flatted. So the nine can be flatted. We would call this a G7 flat nine. Or you can sharp the nine, G7 sharp nine. Or we can look at the five. The five can be altered. You can flat it or you can sharp it. And using any of these notes right here, along with our G7 chord, will give us an altered G altered chord. And you can do this with any other chord as well, okay? And once again, these altered chords come into play when we start playing passing chords and um, when we're using them as a transition point or as a shift point in the music. All right, that's a wrap for today. I hope everyone received something, learned something new from this video. We will be releasing more videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So check back with us for more stuff. It's coming to you very soon. Until then, though, have a great day.